Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show Morning Live Edition. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're ready to rock and roll here, and we are going to talk about the inflation data. Now, you may see this uh, video show up again in the afternoon as a new upload. So we do it live in the morning and then let it kind of ride for a while and then re-put it up as a uh, new video. Kind of tricks YouTube. Shh, don't tell them. So uh, here we got the boom. Up go the interest rates. Yes, Miguel. Downward price pressure. Yes, you're happy. <laughs> A lot of people out there waiting for a big downward pricing pressure. Could happen. Hard to tell. So what we're seeing is you can see we're scrolling on the bottom there what the numbers are looking at, looking like. But uh, inflation rose 0.5 percent. They were expecting it to go up 0.4. I don't, you know, these people that analyze this and we're off a tenth of a point and the market's going bonkers. Um, so, but it's 6.4 percent up from a year ago. And good morning, Jackie. Good to see you. And, uh, um, oh, I got an email from a subscriber out in Illinois this morning. She called herself the uh, uh, real estate couch expert. <laughs> I thought that was great. So anyway, inflation rose January by 0.5% following a 0.1 increase in December. Ooh, so it went a little higher, according to the Consumer Price Index report. It was up 6.4% from the same period in 2022. Both numbers higher than expected. So what happens when they're higher than expected? Well. Our rates go up. We're at 6.54. Yesterday, we were at 6.5. And uh, that's what's going on, Sean. They are rising. Not dramatically. And you can see here, see this little spot there? It says minimal. The rates are rising minimum. And this is a, just because this says 6.54 doesn't mean it's 6.54 everywhere. This is a national survey. But it says that instant view January CPI accelerates, but the trend is easing. So they're basically saying, while well, CPI went up, um, it's not going up as dramatically as it as it was. That may not be very comforting, but uh, it certainly sends a signal that we're not getting out of this any anytime soon. Cromford Market had a little commentary yesterday I found interesting, and when they said we're seeing about two thousand accepted contracts a week for Greater Phoenix, this is good news. It's much higher than during the fourth quarter of 2022, which we never exceeded 1,500 accepted contracts per week and dipped below 1,200 three times during the holidays. The bad news is that we've been stuck around 2,000 level for three weeks. And it would be nice to get back to the same level as last year when we hit 2,200 or more in most weeks. The recent uptick in interest rates is going to put some cold water on buyer enthusiasm. And uh, it's hard to say if this is going to have a small or large effect on the market as a whole. This last line, as you have guessed by now, I am on the fence until we see more data roll in. Well, here's some. This is a seven-day moving average. I'm watching it to see if this dip that we had in new listings is just because of all the activity that was going on in the Phoenix area over the weekend. You had waste management open. You had that little football game. What the heck? Oh, yeah, Super Bowl. And uh, so activity went down um, a little bit here. But you're seeing that sales contracts went up very little right here. Nothing major. And so um, I think basically what we're seeing right now is that uh, if, if the bond market keeps reacting like it is this morning, it's going to slow down the spring market. What's keeping the spring market from really slowing down um, is that well, I mean, not keeping it from slowing down, but we still don't have um, a lot of new listings. They are not climbing. I mean, I just showed here on uh, on the seven-day moving average that the blue line, which is new listings, why are they going down in February? They usually don't. Um, and if we look at, uh, in total, take a look at what's going on in our listings in the market. Well, that's not the listings. This is, uh, let's see. This is average list price. Then I'll get to the listings in just a moment. But average list price have been coming in below 2022, expected, of course, but still higher than 2021. But you see here at $352 a square foot this year, and last year it was $338. Um, that's going to, uh, um, yeah, that's why people are staying put. That's for sure. People are building concessions into their list pricing. We've said that many times here. And so it's going to take uh, um, 
I don't see that changing anytime, anytime soon. So let me look at our app, active listings here on the daily, on the short term of the Cromford market. And this is going to show you where we're at once again, going down. Um, if we look at it in uh, active listings medium term here, um, you can see that we kind of flatlined here, but this is Saturday night. Now, when we look at this next week, that's going to be lower. They're showing 14,721. I pull it off the MLS uh, every morning. We're 15,000. What are we at today? 15,375. So I honestly don't know why those numbers differ, but they do. Um, here's an interesting one I found this morning. This is new month sales, months of supply by stage of construction nationally. I know there was a video out there showing all of the new homes that we have in Arizona and saying that we're uh, we're on the edge of Armageddon. But this is showing here that uh, these are months under construction, months completed, months of supply. So months of supply for completed homes nationally are less than two. Months of supply on homes that are under construction is a little under six months. Uh, but it's spiked up to seven months here in January. You can see going back to 2008 what happened. You know, we were up six months supply and, and five months supply for new construction. But uh, not as alarming as you would expect based on some of the narratives that we've that we've heard. Um, I don't think they count back on market. Um, I'm just counting active, Jackie. So I don't I'm not I'm not putting that in. Um, I'm also not building and coming soon. So but it's only, you know, a few hundred homes. The wild ride continues. Yeah, we we were kind of expecting that February would just kind of muddle along. Um, but, uh, you know, it doesn't take much of a number to move the markets. And uh, like Pat said, we've been trading in this narrow channel. But you know how he has that 200-day um, moving average and we had that floor. Well, we blew through the floor. So technical analysis isn't always close. It's pretty accurate as a whole, but there are times where it it goes off. I'm surprised my friends trying to purchase a house in Mesa Gilbert and the budget's around 420. They're saying whatever they like's gone within a day. They couldn't offer. Um, and uh, I watch Gilbert inventory daily. It's in the 550 range. Today, 362 under contract. I use Redfin. Yeah, Mark, Redfin's a good uh, good resource. Uh, back to Sherat here. If I'm, am I saying your name right? I hope so. Um, Gilbert's uh, Gilbert's moving pretty quick. People price their homes correctly. They're moving. They're going. Uh, I've run into that too, where uh, you try to get some. I, I ran into a multiple bid on an open door home yesterday. And, uh, you know, go figure. Uh, they're not, you know, if you use their lender, they give you, you know, some buy down money. I don't know if anybody took advantage of that or not. Uh, do Vegas just moved back to Alatuki? Deadbeat tenant skipped out O's over two months. Yuck. I had that happen once in a uh, condo that I owned in Everett, and we just had our first baby. And uh, this this clown decided he he was he was sick and he said he couldn't pay me. And I said, Well, I I can't call the bank and tell them I can't pay them. Um, so I said, You got to figure something out here. And and he uh Two months. I had another guy in there, I think after him or before him, I can't remember. He wasn't paying me at all. And I went and talked to an attorney and the attorney says, tell him if he leaves, he doesn't owe you anything, but he has to leave in the morning. He goes, you know, you'll just that you're not going to get that back rent. And so I did. And he left. So it's um, not quite that easy now for to get renters out if they don't pay. I know in Arizona, um, you know, you there's a process to go through and do Vegas. You've probably experienced that. You end up going down to the courthouse and uh, the judge tells him, you know, did you bring your money? No. OK, well, you got to be out. Uh, you got to be out by Friday. So being a landlord's tough out there unless you're having it professionally managed. And that's certainly not free. Um, so what I think's going on now is, um, you know, now we wait for the CPI number to be adjusted the bond market will have to absorb it a little bit um, it's reacting this morning um, to the news uh, the stock market actually has gone up a little bit um, I don't know why that would be but <laughs> the bond market is just kind of you know they like we had an article that we saw the other day that said uh, they were playing chicken with the Fed and they lost and they didn't think 
the Fed would continue to keep rates going up, and they are. So those looking at an apartment in the Valley, do you think this fall or spring 2024 20, would be a better time to sign a lease? Do you anticipate? Well, rent is going down. Um, what we're seeing, especially in Tempe, you know, two words that I don't think go together in Tempe. Maybe it's more than two words, but it's a, um, luxury and student. I mean, they've built some incredibly nice apartments right along Apache Boulevard, right really close to ASU, way more than the number of students that are going there. Now we're starting to see prices come down in Tempe quite a bit. Um, going into 2024, where do we see rent? Well, it all depends on what part of the valley. There's a lot of these rent-to-own communities just springing up everywhere. And to me, they're prohibitively expensive. They're about 2400 to 2500 a month. And, uh, you know, they're nice. They're little two-bedroom homes or three-bedroom homes you can rent. And it's a little community with a lot of amenities and pet-friendly. Um, but if they start building too many of those, that's going to drive um, rent prices down. But we're not seeing a lot of pressure. I can pull up on the Cromford here, see if I can find something for you while I've, while I've got you here. Um, here's our average rent on this chart. And you can see it's not it, – it went up from – a dollar thirty-two to a dollar thirty-four per square foot, but it hit a peak of a dollar forty. <clears throat> That's a little misleading because not all rentals end up on the MLS, the multiple listing service. Most of your renters end up on uh, Zillow, Rent.com, or just big corporate apartments. And uh, looking in Gilbert East Mesa, ideally, Gilbert has a lot of building going on. So there is. We haven't reached the glut yet, but there is. You can go around and see a lot of these uh, multifamily apartments being built that aren't done yet and they look like they're going to be done probably around uh the end of summer so that should bring some relief uh but again it all depends on you know if if resale starts slowing down that puts pressure everybody going more towards rental so it's a hard one to forecast except just for current inventory and there were so many new permits for multifamily housing outpacing um new construction uh for single family homes that all indicators are that rent will be lower by next year. I'm in Flagstaff. What do you think will happen here with housing prices and rent prices? We rent and I want out of our place, but trying to decide what's best. I don't see the Flagstaff data, but my understanding is they have a pretty severe inventory shortage. And they also have um, a high number of, um, um, you're welcome, um, high number of Airbnbs up there, as does Sedona. And so that really pulled a lot out of the housing market. And I know that, uh, gosh, a few years ago, uh, Northern Arizona University told uh, seniors they couldn't stay on campus anymore. They had to go get uh, off-campus housing because they didn't have room for all the freshmen that were coming in. That put tremendous pressure on rents. And you you had people renting studio apartments where three people were living in it. Uh, rough time, rough time up there. Um, I'm hoping the market's already anticipated the number reflected today paired with the jobs report. Rates stay where they are, hoping some rate relief in some coming months. You know, it looks like, you know, we follow Barry Abib quite a bit, and he's still saying that by May, in May, when we compare the inflation numbers to last year, that uh, it's going to, to be dramatically lower and that we'll see a huge downward move in rates, uh, but huge from where? So if we, if we were at 5.99, would we end up in the low fives? Uh, but now we're at 6.54. So we're going to be happy if we see five nine again, uh, but it looks like we will see a dip. Um, what's your opinion of Levine? There are new builders there, but is it safe for family with a baby? Um, I would have to point you towards uh, just pulling up crime reports. Um, I that would be kind of disingenuous for me to make a guess because I don't live out there. I don't know a lot about it. Um, I mean, I know Levine has a lot of building going on, but as far as the activities out there, I. I couldn't tell you. I like to just uh, ask people to look that up because <laughs> what if I'm wrong? I'll get my pants suit off. I'm in Hawaii going to build a small shipping container home. Is land less expensive in Payson? Um, no, not really. Um, Payson doesn't have a lot of availability up there. Um, they uh, be careful with the water up there. Make sure that if you are getting land that, you know, you have the water, um, you know, see if test and see if there's a, if you can build a well. Um, so Jackie's got a link here that she's provided. Here is a link to use for that. Um, 
I don't see it on here, Jackie. Maybe it shows up on YouTube. But uh, um, gotta gotta be at halfway to Greer for my girls and snow. Oh, you're going snowboarding. Good for you. It's got to be snowing like crazy up there right now. It's uh, it's cold and wet down here, and I didn't see that coming. I uh, I got that that weather took me by surprise. So tomorrow, and really looking at the rates today, um, and you know, and going back to this page where it's showing that um, it's kind of moving, it hasn't got up, went up like 0 0.04. Let's see how the dust settles on this tomorrow and see if we're starting to get some relief. But I think we're going to be hanging in this 6.5 range for a while. Um, and by a while, I mean uh, 30 days, uh, maybe 60 days. Uh, Jack said, I posted it, but go to Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and search crime by zip code. Thank you again. Um, that's why we call you our senior research analyst, because you're the only research analyst we have. It's nothing to do with age, because <laughs> I corner that market. So, folks, uh, thank you again for joining us, and I will be back again tomorrow. And uh, do me a favor before you leave, tap that little like button. Thanks again. Take care.